uh, Minecraft EDU video. Uh, this video uh, is about a lesson that I'm in the process of creating that was actually inspired by one of the code.org uh, activities from their extension to the Hour of Code called the K-8 to uh, Computer Science Curriculum. Uh, they had a, a lesson here called the Graph Paper Programming, which I encourage you to check out at stage four of the course. Uh, and in that activity, the students use some symbols to recreate drawings on graph paper. I've tried to emulate that activity in a way using uh, Minecraft. And in this activity, the students will be recreating uh, some pretty simple pixel art using some commands uh, that they'll have to uh, come up with as within their class. Uh, and I, what I'm envisioning so far is that each student would be given a book and quill where they would be uh, transcribing the, the directions for uh, how to actually make their design, which will then be passed off to another student who has to follow the code and recreate the drawing. Uh, the map features a few fancy uh, commands using WorldEdit that uh, I think will help with the presentation. Uh, but to start, the student would have to analyze their their drawing, uh, and this is, first one here is an, is an envelope picture. So they would use their book and quill or probably some paper and pencil too to start planning it uh, and come up with uh, some simple code just using directions like up, down, left, and right, and also the command draw, which would uh, indicate that we would put a, a block of wool down in that space. So uh, what it might look like if they're finished uh, or if they're just gonna start from scratch, uh, we would agree that we'd start with the top left corner. Uh, and in this case, there's nothing down there. Uh, so I would probably begin this one by saying down. Uh, and then let's see, the first, the next thing that might make sense would be to draw in that space and then move right uh, and then draw again and then move right. Uh, but actually there's a pattern here. So I think maybe an easier way to do this would be to uh, put that in, in parentheses. So maybe I could do something like uh, write, draw, and then uh, for the final eight times, I could that would get me across the, the top of the envelope. Uh, and then I could keep going from there. Uh, a finished version of that might look something like this. So the, the, the uh, top side of the envelope, write, draw times eight, uh, all the way around the envelope, uh, and then the last three lines of code just to get the V shape um, that forms, I guess, the, the all that V shape. Uh, and then after they're done with that, the student would sign the book, which would make it so that they can't edit it anymore. And each drawing, uh, they're not going to call it envelope. That would kind of spoil the surprise. So each one of these puzzles would have uh, a random number assigned to it. Uh, and then they would sign the book and submit it somewhere. Again, this map isn't finished. And at that point, uh, they would be waiting until other students have finished their books and be swapping. Uh, and the student who gets the book is going to uh, take the book over uh, to this other side here where they're going to have to recreate it. And of course, they can't see the original, but uh, I'll take care of that a little later. Um, so what I'm imagining here is that they're going to become the the computer that's reading the code now and they're going to do the same thing starting in the right and making use of some of the build allow blocks so that they'll know where they can do this. I've come to the conclusion that building on a flat surface is much easier than building on uh, a walled surface, uh, much less jumping involved. Uh, they'd have to get some materials so let me just uh, do that quickly. Let's uh, grab some of these and uh, so now that I'm ready, I will start reading the oops, reading the directions. So I'm going to down and then draw. Okay, so I'm moving down, and then I'm going to draw. Okay, and check my book again for the next step of directions. Write, draw, times eight. So let's do a write, draw, write, draw, write, draw, write, draw, write, draw, uh, eight times. And then they'll continue uh, reading the book and hopefully uh, get through the design uh, and find out if it matches. Let's see. Let's pretend I've got the code memorized and I can just do this fairly quickly. And then that V shape. OK, 
Okay, and now, of course, the true test is, does it match the original? And this is where the teacher comes into play, uh, and the teacher would have to do a couple of quick commands. Uh, it's not as bad as it, as it might, might seem. Uh, the first one is to uh, get a, a position of this first corner. So if there's no block here, I can use POS1. Uh, if there is a block here, I can look at it and hit HPOS1. The second corner that I need to grab is actually this glass block here, so I'm going to use HPOS2. And uh, the flipping that I'm about to do is actually going to, it's going to flip this up so that it's vertical. But to do that, I have to have a perfectly uh, cube-shaped area selected. So I'm going to expand this uh, nine blocks up. And if I hit size, it should be a uh, 10 by 10 by 10 cube. You can see that there on the third line from the bottom. Uh, and now there's a neat little command that I just learned today that is deform, uh, swap, and then Z and Y. Those are the two axes that I'm going to uh, swap. And when I do that, the whole drawing that the student created will flip up into the air like that, which is uh, very nice. Uh, and if, let's say, uh, there were other students working here, uh, let's see, we'll just add a couple of random uh, creations there. Then to continue uh, flipping these, all I'd have to do is first say uh, shift this uh, by 10 spaces to the west and then I can go up and use the exact same swap thing. And now that I both have those, I have both of those commands in there recently, I can just keep going back uh, and enter those same two commands over and over and over again until I run out of commands and we'll flip them all up into the air. Uh, and then as a teacher, I would use my uh, fill tools here with nothing in the inventory, uh, grab one corner of this quartz and grab another far corner, close enough for now, and that will actually reveal the, uh, the, the answers. So we can see, uh, see how the students did. And in this case, I think I nailed it. Uh, the next few students, of course, probably need to work on their their uh, their programming skills because these do not match at all. Uh, anyway, I think it'll be fun for the students to see if uh, their designs match. It's kind of a nice introduction to pixel art too. Uh, some extensions to this, of course, would be having the kids make their own initial designs or incorporating some commands so that you could have pixel art with more than one color. But I think this would be a nice uh, initial activity. Uh, it talks uh, about getting just, it, it talks about having some simple commands and then also as you saw with uh, the parentheses and the numbers, I think it's a nice way to, to talk about loops. Uh, the, the code itself is, is not based on any real language, so uh, you can come up with that with the students as long as there are some, some clear expectations about the, the limits of that. We don't want to have things like, uh, you know, draw a star as a command. So very simple directions uh, that that any uh, person would be able to to follow and hopefully if we gave this book to another student you know they could make the exact same object with those plans anyway that's the the world as it stands right now uh, I do have lots of other uh, objects in the world uh, lots of other art for the, the students to draw I've come across a bunch of little nine by nine icons uh, once I get these last few filled in I'll have enough spaces for 33 kids to work through this uh, I do need to add a few more things like some uh, some ways for the students to teleport around uh, and uh, some ways for them to get the books and quills um, and to trade those around and also for them to get the materials. But that's the world as it is right now. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks.